So as new students are getting ready to travel across the world and start their study abroad adventures, there's some really important tips that you guys need to know so you don't make big mistakes. And I'm here at Arizona State University with experts sharing their tips for new students that are gonna help you guys be successful. Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. I'm Rob, and we're all about guiding people on their cross-cultural journey to be successful, especially international students. And we'll be giving you guys the most important tips that you need as you prepare to go abroad, especially for people starting this fall. And we've got experts from ASU. Go ahead and introduce yourself, friends. Hi, I'm Archana. I'm from India. I'm currently pursuing my PhD in Biomedical Engineering at Arizona State University. Hi everyone, this is Swastik. I'm from India and I did my undergraduate in uh, Mechanical Engineering from ASU, graduated in 2016, and I'm currently a Mechanical Engineering professional working in Caterpillar. Hi everyone, my name is Gyanesh Trivedi. I'm originally from Mumbai, India, and I got a Master's in Mechanical Engineering from ASU in 2017. Now I just work in Phoenix at a company called ASM America. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys spending time to share your experience. You know, looking back, man, what did I wish I knew so people can do it Woo. better this time? Uh, <laughs> trying coaching is helping people, you know, learn from the experts who learn the hard way to make the path easier for you guys in your future. And our first big tip is immigration documents. What do they need to know about that, Swastik? Immigration documents are a big part of your transition from India to the US. They are probably the most important things that you should be careful about and be cognizant of and make sure that you have all the immigration documents properly lined up and they're set in order when you arrive because when you arrive in the immigration, there would be an immigration official kind of interviewing you, like a brief interview at the port of entry. Do not get nervous about it. It's just a conversation and they just want to know that you are truthful and you're being honest to express your intent of coming into the US. Just be honest, just be you, just say what you're here for. And they know the drill and they just wanna see that you're confident in answering. And as I said before, it's just a conversation. So they might ask, ask you for some documents, so make sure you have everything prepared in a file. Even when you come over here, having your immigration documents sec secured is very important because if you want to get a state ID or a driving license or getting registered for some random things, signing up for a bank account, for getting a network, all of these immigration documents are very important. The most important thing being never recycle or never toss any of your immigration document. Keep a historical archive of all the immigration documents that you have ever received since your point of admission to your current state. I cannot emphasize on how many students falter on not keeping up with their immigration requirements and immigration documents. So it's just a simple thing. It's one of the major things that you need to be mindful of. As long as you do all of these things, you should be good. One important point to add is whatever state you go in, try to get at least a state ID or a driver's license. Those things will help you out a lot. Try to get them as soon as possible. Even if you don't know how to drive a car, at least get a state ID. Definitely, yeah. That way you don't have to carry your passport around all the time. Exactly. So losing your passport is a big headache and we've made oh, videos yes. about that and you don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so Ganesh, as these new students are preparing to come, who are the key people at the university they should be re reaching out to and connecting with to get mentorship for? I think three sets of people. Uh, one would be academic advice. And academic advisors are different from professors. Academic advisors will guide you through your learning journey, the courses that you pick, they'll advise you on how you're doing in your classes, what options you have. Etc. And those are based on the department, right? Those are based on the department, exactly. So mm -hmm. contact your, your school and your department within your school of study and find out who your advisors are. Contact them. Second is international advisors. International advisors will help you with resources pertaining to you as an international student. So this could be something as simple as uh, immigration, something as simple as getting your documents in order and signed and getting your I-20 or you know whatever additional documents you require from the university. Or they could also involve a slightly more complex set of services such as law services or civil services which are not available to everyone else but are specifically catered to international students so let's say if you get into a scuffle with maybe the law at some point or if you get involved in some sort of a you know god forbid uh, in, in some sort of a case somewhere universities usually have a department to deal with these things for international students and mm -hmm. i think a lot of people are unaware of that so try to get in touch at least with one of the people in your international students advising department and then the third thing is if you're really looking to take initiative try and contact your professors or try and contact someone from your department and the alumni they will help you out the most. Not professors, but I think alumni, people who've shared the same experiences as you're about to, mm -hmm. it would be very good to hear from them. It mm -hmm. would be very good to get their feedback on the rights and wrongs, where they mm -hmm. stayed, what they did, what they ate, 
everything. The more you know, the better and well informed you'll be. Definitely. I would like to add on to that by saying that the International Student Office is your guardian when you're here in the university and your guardian angel when you're in some sort of trouble with immigration and things like that. God forbid that happens, but you need to know who the right people to talk to in the International Student's Office. And it's good, it's always better to, you know, get suggestions, recommendations from your peers and, you know, from your yeah. seniors and all. But make sure you're not taking any major steps in terms of immigration unless you've consulted with the International Office. That's the most important thing that mm -hmm. even the International Office advises you about. And just be mindful of that and never forget that. Any small thing, small decision related to immigration, immigration that you take, consult the DSO first. They're always there to help you out. Archana, what are some tips for students in finding good housing? It might appear that when you're kind of checking about apartment websites in uh, like in and around the university, you know, everything looks fancy, everything looks very well equipped. But then you want to talk to alumni, especially people who have stayed in that particular apartment community. How safe is it? Or, you know, like how are like the amenities? And there are certain apartments that are relatively a little older here where, you know, you might face certain issues. You want to be careful about what kind of housing you're getting. In India, we speak in kilometers, but here it's like in miles. So you might think like, like it's, it's pretty close to the university, but then when it comes to biking on a hot summer day, it can get really difficult for you. So you want to speak to people who are already living here and, you know, make sure that you are finding a suitable housing that's, you know, well within your budget. In fact, in this housing scenario, ASU has like a network on, I think they connect through like Facebook, wherein you can find individuals who are, you know, joining your degree program in the same year as you. And you can basically connect with them and, you know, for all you know, they can become your roommates even. It's a good idea to kind of connect with people in terms of the housing and not just sign a lease sitting, you know, far away. It's not a very smart thing to do, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. We've got some great resources and videos on Shine Coaching on how to select housing and apartments, so check those out. And also, yeah, do your research. There's Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, connect with alumni on LinkedIn. And just because it looks good online, a lot of these apartments Photoshop it, and then <laughs> it's a bad surprise when you get there. So don't be that. Uh, do unless, your research. Unless, of course, you're comfortable sleeping with uh, cockroaches and bed bugs. In that yeah. case, uh, I mean, I've also, <laughs> in, in, in like a lot of the scenarios, like a lot of the apartment communities, if they're like luxury apartment communities, they'll like force you to take certain kind of like services and stuff like that which you don't want to do as a student and they're still near the university so you're like oh maybe you know it's close to the university so maybe it's a student community but that's not always true some of them are luxury and very expensive. So, yeah, and they're expensive, very expensive as well. And I've kind of had like my own personal experience where, you know, like it was just like a simple service that I didn't want to take, but then I was forced to take. And then, you know, like they charged me like extra for that and stuff like that. You don't want that as a student. It's just mm -hmm. like an added stress in your life. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions to these people because they're in the business of selling you apartments, but you got to know like what's your budget mm -hmm. like, what kind of preferences do you have? So feel free to bombard them with questions and they are accountable for all the answers that they provide and just make an informed decision is all we all would recommend you to do. Now, another really big tip that you guys don't want to miss and be aware of is the scams. There's a lot of scams that unfortunately people prey on international students. And so Archana, what are the scams that people need to be careful of? I think one of the most common scams is like if people just like call and ask for like your social security number or, you know, they say like your social sec security account is like expiring or something like that. And y you have to be like super careful. Nobody, literally nobody will ask for your social security number only in certain cases they probably ask for your address only for verification but make sure you're like connected to a secure line with a verified individual in fact in a lot of cases the verification is done like through automated systems so make sure that you're not sharing your critical information with anybody except in the absolute need for it that is the most common set of scams the other set of scams are like job scams you want to verify the source of the job you want to verify the source of the company because when you come to the US you're only authorized to work on a certain set of jobs especially given your immigration status so you want to make sure that you are complying always verify with the international students office if you can take up a particular job you want them to like vet it out so that you're safe so that eventually when you're like applying for a job like after you graduate and stuff there's no red flags per se you know with like some kind of scam companies or things like that you want to be extremely mm -hmm. careful about that the third 
next set of scams that might happen is related to housing. Uh, the housing laws in Arizona are extremely strict and you want to be very careful to comply with them. Do not let anybody even enter your house until and unless you really know them personally. Do, do not let people, especially like you're speaking to them online and be like, oh, can I, can I just stay in your place for a couple of days? You definitely don't want to do that. I learned to like, really awful experience that individuals if they live up to 72 hours in your home they're considered a resident of the place so you want to be really careful about the housing laws and comply with them as much as possible and of course like if you i mean god forbid you get into any trouble make sure you're going through like the proper channel to basically get out of the situation you can maybe call like 911 make sure the cops are there put everything on like record make sure things are you know you're within the legal boundaries or reach out to international services yes and of course mm -hmm. reach out to international yeah. services ISA even. and ISC even they, they will yeah. definitely help you ISC does put out alerts about you know the different scams that are going on at, at a particular time so make sure to check out their page and keep up with it and you know just and if any point you find anything a little shady immediately stop engaging with that individual or that organization and before you like only when you verify that's when you can like go ahead and engage with them I would specifically like to point out on a couple of things so identity theft is a big thing in the united states so be very mindful of as archana said of whom you're sharing your critical information with no banks no verified organization is asked for those information directly over email or any other source so just be very mindful of where you are putting your information about on and because everything is recorded like everything has a record in the united states the moment you enter so do not do anything that's against the law and the second most critical thing is immigration scam a lot of the times people get calls about or oh, your visa status has expired mm -hmm. or your visa has been revoked or your passport is expired uh, and you need to act urgently so they create a sense of urgency so that you panic and then you end up paying money which is a big no-no so do not panic in these situations know that if any such thing happens it is the communication is going to come straight from the university or specifically from the international students office so rely on them reach out to them if you have anything that's confusing that you have questions about as i said before do not hesitate to ask the questions and get things clarified rather than having false information and making the wrong call that can ruin your career and your journey to the US. Also just yeah. talk to your peers just I mean talk yeah. to your friends yeah. and verify <laughs> if they're going through the same thing. I mean if mm -hmm. it's going to happen to you then you got to make sure that's happening to everyone. Um, while we're talking about scams, I would generally like to talk to you about safety in general because it's it's super important. Like you're coming so far away from home, you're all by yourself. So make sure, especially when you're kind of getting to know the place, you want to not venture out all alone by yourself. Like later in the night, be very mindful of maybe not being in like on a lonely street or something like that because there can be certain incidents because I mean, it's a university campus. There are like a lot of people. Let me point out that there is the Arizona State Police that's there as well as the Tempe Police. So you want to use both of these resources to the fullest extent as possible. If there is like an incident on the ASU campus, you want to you know contact the ASU Police as well. There's the Live Safe app, which is which basically gives you alerts on if there's something you need to be careful about or if there's like an incident on campus. So you just keep yourself updated and you know basically avoid getting into any trouble. Also for ladies, ASU has an escort service that they provide in the evening hours up until 2 a.m. in the morning. If you're out and if you want to head back home within a certain radius around the university, then ASU will provide escort services. Yeah, most colleges have that. Most colleges students. have that, yes. So take advantage to be safe, and be yes. smart. And our chat question for you guys watching is, what's the biggest tip that you would give to a new incoming student? Maybe from what you've heard from others, your own experience, go ahead and tell us in the comments, what's the biggest tip that you would give uh, maybe something different than we've shared so far. Now, Swastik, tell us what's the big important tip about packing luggage that new students need to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned it the hard way. So obviously, when I traveled here for the first time, I definitely overpacked. And whenever I go back home, my parents would never, like, they never listen. My family would always end up overpacking my luggage. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I don't see a need to overpack on a lot of things. Yes, certain things, maybe like small utensils or certain things that are very quintessential about India, you can bring with you that reminds you of home. But in terms of a lot of spices or food items and things like that, or clothing, there is no need to overpack because there are plenty 
plenty of resources and places around that you can get it. There are big supermarkets like Walmart, Fry's, uh, and a lot of these grocery stores, and a lot of Indian restaurants and grocery stores around as well, where you get all these spices and different things that you yeah. Yeah. get in India. So don't feel that you're, you'll be left out or you won't have access to all of these things. The second thing is in terms of uh, clothing and a lot of electronic devices. Now the wattage requirements are different in India as compared to the US. So you don't need to bring everything from like back home. Over here they have yearly semi-annual sales and things like that where you get all these electronics and stuff for pretty cheap. So it's probably going to be a better deal for you over here than overpacking your bags, which adds extra extra few pounds to your, yes. yeah. to, to your luggage. Um, so the one thing I would like to add when you're packing your luggage is that first of all, do not let your parents pack your luggage. <laughs> Make sure that you know what's going into your suitcases because many of the times when you when it comes to like when you're trying to pass the customs and stuff like that some things you know might look different on the x-ray machine and they'll be like do you have this in your bag and you'll be like i don't know my parents packed it and and they'll basically look at you like wait what are you sure these are your bags so you want to make sure that you know what exactly is going into your bags because Jura it, was the really bad thing the other year when i was yeah. picking up students everyone got stuff at customs because they packed Jira and mm -hmm. they packed it for cooking. Cumin seeds, yeah. Yeah, the cumin, yeah. the Jira seeds, those things are gonna get you stopped. You'll have to throw yes. them away. And yes. then people pick you up at the airport have to wait hours. Yeah. So don't pack that. All like fresh produce. Like people think, oh, you know what? I want like the initial few days of I want to make sure I have like rice and like dal, like just like basic stuff. Correct. But don't pack you, that. that you, they won't let, you, let that go through customs yeah. because you're, I mean, for other reasons but like bottom line do not crack any fresh produce because most likely that will get rejected well, during yeah. customs no seeds no rice try to avoid spices if you can bring some basic maybe chili and mm -hmm. uh, Bo box things are okay box things are fine cook things are fine Thanks. cook dry things. stuff is is absolutely fine but mm -hmm. try to make sure none of it is like a liquid sloshing around sort of gritty yeah. thing so yes dry yeah. snacks are good and also coordinate with your roommates it's bad if all four of you show up with a giant pressure cooker. <laughs> so have one person bring the pressure cooker, someone bring something else and coordinate, save your mm. luggage. Um, but you can get, That's true. there's a little place in America called Walmart where you can get everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. One important question a lot of people ask is, should I buy a phone? Because a lot of people are switching phones when they come to the US. Should I buy my phone in India or should I buy my phone in the US? Mm -hmm. There are chances that if you come to the US, you will get it for at least half off, if mm -hmm. not more. There's a lot of discounts going on, a lot of uh, free promotions, free promotions going on, a lot of mobile phone carriers like T-Mobile or Verizon, the equivalent of Airtel and Vodafone here. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have promotion offers where if you buy a certain set of prescribed lines, then you'll get a free phone with your connection or, mm -hmm. you know, two free phones with your connection. So also, family, plan also for family think, plans. Also, I think like the phones over here operate on a different bandwidth as compared exactly. to India. So yes. very likely that when you Bring in your phone from India, it may not work as well over yes. here. Like you may not get like the fast internet, like yes. 5G. And there are like certain uh, 5G bands that are operational in India and certain 5G bands that are operational here and certain devices that are compatible. So like a OnePlus T bought in India versus something bought in the US has a capability to receive a different bandwidth. Yeah, and we've got some other great videos about packing and luggage, SIM cards, cell phones, so check those out. So for another tip, Ganesh, why is it important for students to get out of their bubble and meet oh. new people? I can't stress this enough, uh, Rob. It's a great point that you brought up. If you're coming to the United States, you're coming to a different country, it is because you want to get a certain experience. It's because you want to change yourself. It's because you want to explore different aspects of your personality. So don't stay confined to what you know. Don't stay confined to familiarity. Move away from that. Try to explore different things. Be open-minded. I'm not saying leave everything that you know and just transform as a person. Yes, have your identity, your traits, but it's very important to get out of your comfort zone and be mentally prepared to constantly get out of your comfort zone. Just don't stop next best thing. Try to get more out of your experience and that's the way you're going to become a well-honed personality as you come out of your time at US universities. It's very important to have that new experience, that unique experience and to get to know more different, better, 
all of these different things. Yeah, I find in my observation, most international students tend to stay with their type of people. Mm -hmm. Their roommates, their classmates, even their professors are all from their country. That's not a way to make the most of this opportunity and you're gonna miss out on so many things. And to be very honest, the professors and also the, like the other, like say your academic advisors and all, they recognize that you're coming from a different country. It's a huge change for you. They will definitely talk to you about the cultural transitions that you will go through and just don't be afraid to speak about things in the open. It's very likely that when you start speaking about, you know, the cultural shocks you're facing, it's very likely that all the people around you might be facing similar things and you may not be even from the same country. You will dis discover like people from very different countries have very similar cultures. Even though everything is like so diverse, they're all still the same. We're all still humans. We like to stick together. We're social animals. So yeah, just get out there and have fun. To add to this one very important PSA to everyone is try not to have similar people in your project group. I think that's one of the best way to expand your academic horizons and even your cultural horizons. Because a project group is something that you'll have to make every semester for multiple mm -hmm. courses. And try to have people with different perspectives, people from different cultural backgrounds, non-Indians in your group. That'll really help you expand your horizons. Ganesh talked about it from a grad student perspective for in undergrad where the demographics of Indian students like international Indian students are not as much you are by default required to partner with people from different cultures and backgrounds and I believe it's essential to you having a different perspective on things on an approach on a lot of things inside of the ASU experience and beyond that as well. I believe that it's a way to challenge yourself because let's be honest here, we spend all of these money and all these efforts and the hassle of coming from India to a different foreign country. Do we just want to restrict ourselves to just being around the same people that we have been with all through our life? I would say no, because that's what made my experience way better that I got to connect with so many different people. They helped me learn a lot. It helped change me a lot of my thought processes, get rid of some of the conservative mindsets that we stick to being in India. So those things gave me a perspective that let's try things differently. Let's see what others have to offer. And guess what? Like mingling with other, other people from different communities makes you a good listener. Mm. You learn to listen and not always talk. That's what helps in exchange of culture, ex exchange of conversation. And that's what helps drive a lot of misconceptions and stigmas about certain societies and culture. Well, this has been amazing. You guys, if you follow these tips, you're gonna be way ahead and have a much better experience going abroad. Give a big like and thumbs up this video to say thanks to these guys sharing from their experiences, their lessons learned, maybe some of their own mistakes, but Thank these you. are gonna help yep. you guys. These are awesome tips. Share these with other incoming students as well to help them. We wanna help you guys be successful. Connect with us online on social media so we can continue to guide you and give you more helpful tips like this. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time at Shine Coaching. Cheers. Yes.